Well, we've heard a lot today about the word amandla and what that means. Um, amandla means power. But the response to that is awetu. And I don't know if you can recall your first real encounter with that phrase. But mine was just this year when I went to attend a national congress up in Joburg and the speaker opened the event with amandla. And the crowd gave an impassioned response, aware to everyone except myself. I sheepishly looked at my feet and just hoped that it didn't lead to any dancing. <laughs> um, but that first experience got me thinking about what a mindle means. Because it's being used in a political sense was and still is used as a rallying cry for democratic freedom in South Africa. That, free, that phrase means power to the people. It means the power is ours. It means that we all shall be equal before the law. And it also means this, the people shall share in the country's wealth. That phrase was encapsulated in the 1955 Freedom Charter, which set out a design, a blueprint, for a future South Africa. <coughs> but that picture is revealing, because the beauty of Table Mountain in the background is juxtaposed against the sprawling shacks in front of it. What it means is that despite these grand visions contained in documents like the Freedom Charter, we have failed. We do not all share in the country's wealth. We are not all equal under the law. As a citizen, lawyer, and political reform activist, I'm here today to show you that it is the design of the legal system above all else that is responsible for the status quo, for the continued inequality. And I'm going to present a solution, a solution that is really unsexy, but incredibly powerful. It's an idea about our electoral system. But before I do that, I want to tell you about a story. And it's a story that goes all the way back to classical Greece. It's a, it's a story about the way in which Greeks decided to organize their public life, how they took decisions, what affected them. If you haven't already figured it out, I'm talking about this, the Greek polis. I don't know if the, those politics courses back at UCT are bringing back memories. But this was the center for public life. It was a place where people came together to take decisions that affected them. Should we go to war? They did. They lost. <laughs> but this, the Spartans came. <laughs> but this was a place where citizens could take decisions. But not everyone was a citizen. Women, foreigners, or well, slaves could not participate in the polis. Unfortunately, things changed. New ideas came along, and fast forward 2,500 years, and we get this. Our constitution. Go to a period around 93, 94, 95, 96. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful for a lot of reasons, but for myself as a lawyer, it's beautiful because it sets out a design for our constitutional dispensation. I don't know how many of you have read it like a book. I have, and um, <laughs> what you'll find is that there are chapters on the spheres of government. There are chapters on how our court should work. There's our national flag in there. There's our anthem in there. It, set out, it sets out a design, and remarkably, 
it gives us our own national polis. It gives us that, the national assembly. It is actually the national assembly that is the area in which we should be debating issues that affect us as a country. We shouldn't be running off to the courts as the primary arbiters of disputes. This is what it says. The National Assembly is elected to represent the people and to ensure government by the people under the Constitution. It does so by choosing a president, by providing a national forum for public consideration of issues, by passing legislation, and by scrutinizing and overseeing executive action. That's the National Assembly. And that's our broad, fr broad framework. The legislature, the executive, the judiciary. Maybe one day, in addition to maths, people will be learning about this structure <laughs> in our schools. Because that's what we've decided is the best way to regulate power in South Africa. And the system underpinning that, the system that makes that possible for people to get into those spaces, is our electoral system. Our current electoral system is the closed list proportional representation system. I'm going to call it a PR system. And the worst thing about our PR system is that no one's willing to admit that they don't know what it is. Well, that's not really the worst problem. But it's part of the problem. How it works in South Africa is that we run off to the voting polls. And what you'll find is a list of parties that you can vote for, not individuals. And then the IEC takes all those votes, tallies them up, and awards seats in our polis, our National Assembly, and awards those seats based on the percentage of votes won. So if a party won 15% of the votes, it gets 15% of the seats. There are currently 400 seats up for grabs. There's a major flaw with this system. And before I speak about that flaw, I would like to ask some questions. And if you could just raise your hands um, when I ask you to answer. So the first question is, how many of you know who your MP is? One. How many of you know who your councillor is? Two, three... Four. You've got her on Twitter, or, he, or him on Twitter, is that it? Um, how, many have you, how many of you have attended a meeting held by your councillor? Take it, not many. One. Um, how many of you think that individuals or corporations should be entitled to make donations to political parties and not have to disclose that information? we can all agree that that's not a good thing. <laughs> but that's what, that's what happens. The major flaw that I'm going to propose today is that there is a lack of accountability in South African politics because of the system that we currently have. There was good reason to choose that system in 1994, 95, 96, because it maximizes inclusivity. And it's fair. And it's simple. But South Africa has changed, and we need to be able and willing to adapt, to adapt to the, and face those challenges. We've heard about some of those challenges. <coughs> We've heard a lot about Kailicha, for example. Um, and maybe recently in the press, you've heard that 60,000 citizens in the Western Cape don't have access to a toilet or 50,000 citizens in Kailicha still have to relieve themselves in a bucket. And there are all sorts of challenges. But I don't know how we respond to that situation. I don't know when that becomes unacceptable that we all rise up and we say that can't happen. Because as a problem, it's not that difficult to solve. But it continues. What I'm talking about, my idea, is a new politics. Because politics is really about the laws, the regulation, the way we decide to set up power sharing or power structures. 
And there is a group of people that has started to come together. Groups of citizens across the political divide, absolutely not affiliated to any party. This is about citizens. And the movement is called My Vote Counts, and it was launched in July this year. And what we're trying to do is create opportunities for citizens to be connected to democracy again. We're asking for two key reforms. The first is we want a representative parliament chosen by the people, not by political parties. A new electoral system with mixed constituency and proportional representation that allows voters to choose their own MPs and allows independent candidates to contest elections. The second is we want comprehensive reform of the funding of political parties to make them 100% open and transparent, responsive, proportionally and neutrally funded to exclude any influence from special interests. If we're going to be talking about power tonight, then we have to talk about money. And if we're going to talk about money, we need to talk about the wealthy, whether it's individuals or corporations. And if we're going to talk about them, then we need to talk about influence. I don't know if anyone's read our, or the laws on party funding, the regulation of private party funding in South Africa, but this is what it looks like. It does not exist. That's a problem. The regulation of private party funding or the funding of political parties from private sources is a critical site in the struggle for an accountable government. But the, second re the first re reform that I mentioned is the one that I really want to talk about. Because in its essence, it's campaigning for a mixed system. One that retains the benefits of the PR system, but adds an addition. It combines it with a constituency-based system. But I have my own secret, and it's that it's not my idea. Did you know that the current electoral system wasn't meant to extend past the 99 elections? I see some nods. In fact, former President Thabo Mbeki commissioned Dr. Fonseil Slabit to get a task team together and look into our electoral system and make a recommendation. And that team did that. And they recommended that we retain some of the benefits of the PR system, but we move to a mixed system. And what that report suggested is that of those 400 seats, 100 should be determined by a current system, our PR system. But the remainder, the 300, should be governed by a new system, a mixed system. And how that works is, according to the report, we should divide the country up into 69 constituencies. And independent candidates, anyone here, can stand to represent the communities within those constituencies. You can't do that at the moment because you vote for a party. But with a mixed system, citizens who are familiar with their communities, the problems that face them, can stand and be elected. Now, this is not a panacea for change, I understand that. And if you read articles on this topic, there will be those who challenge the idea that this will lead to more accountability. But we disagree. We believe that this is an important first step in redistributing power by using the law. I think we all agree that South Africa has reached this point where something needs to change. And I think as citizens, we need to start asking what our own role will be within the struggle. At some stage, we must say, more than it's, more than it's not good enough. At some stage, we need to start acting. We need a new politics. The My Vote Counts campaign has started bringing people together. We've set up some meetings with Parliament, but we will be marching next year. And if we have to go to court, we will. But 
part of this campaign is to bring people out of this apathy and start getting involved. In 1955, the Congress Alliance declared for the world to know that no government can claim authority unless it is based on the will of the people. That was 57 years ago. My idea today is that by redesigning the electoral system, we can take a first step to re redistributing power. And it is said that there is nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come. The time has come to take a big step. And a big step is not only possible, but imperative. You need to join the debate. You need to take a stand. You need to get on the streets and march. Join the campaign. You have to get involved. You have to make your vote count. Amandla, a word to you. Thank <laughs> you.